Hey guys, thanks for jumping in today, for deciding to check out the channel, or specifically this video. And this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, we have, I think at this point, three other videos on the channel of overnight investigations. And I started doing these overnight investigations while I was working at a radio station. And uh, the sort of the inspiration is the old radio shows. I love those old radio dramas. And when I had first started at this particular station, I thought, I want to do something like that. I want to bring the radio drama back to the radio. And it was in the fall, so I thought, you know what? Let's do the ghost thing. Let's follow around a couple of people that do this, and I'll tell the story. It was something that I thought would translate well to radio. Wasn't really expecting anything. I thought it would just be kind of fun and kind of... Honestly, might turn into something a little bit goofy. Turns out I actually recorded some stuff and we got some evidence and that really started sort of my interest in, uh, in this whole thing and kicked it off. So what I did is I still have the audio recordings that we played on the radio at that time. And so I'm going to play that for you. So this is a little bit of a close your eyes and listen experience for this one. I have two more that we'll put together coming up down the road before we get back to ho hopefully doing another overnight investigation here soon and getting you some actual video and, and that whole thing. But this is just going to be audio. Now, some of the audio, the recording's not the best, okay? And so some of the audio isn't coming through like it did originally on the radio. So I apologize for that, but I do think it's interesting enough to at least give a listen. And it's relatively short. St. John's Hospital, it's the old hospital here in Helena. Lots of, uh, well, there are lots of stories about that place. Uh, a, a lady seen in there, an elevator that opens and closes on its own. The hospital is uh, still as it was when they left it, frankly. There are some office uh, spaces on the first floor, I believe, and then on the second floor is some stuff, but the third floor is still abandoned hospital. And it it definitely has a vibe. There are people that work there that won't go up to the third floor. They, they refuse to go. Well, let's just play it for you. Here's the audio. There will be plenty of ghosts roaming the streets of Helena tonight, those of the candy-collecting nature. But what about all the other nights? Are there, as some claim, spirits that have stayed behind, remnants of the capital city's historic past? Curious, I connect with a handful of people looking to answer that question and were granted access to the third floor of the St. John's building, Helena's one-time hospital now managed by Rocky Mountain Care Center. Leading our little late-night party, Helena's Michael Sweet, a medium and founder of Sweet Spot Paranormal. The man with all the gadgets is Joshua Baker, the founder of Quest Paranormal of Montana. He's based over in Phillipsburg. Also with us, investigator Tom Poliant Jr. and photographer John Lynch. Fittingly, it's a dark and stormy night as we head inside. Well, dark and rainy night, anyway. Well, I don't know it at the time. Just 51 seconds into my audio recording, well, listen for yourself. Were you a patient in this hospital? Did you catch it? After Michael asks his questions, some silence, and then... The door to this room where patients were bathed 40 years ago is shut. There are three men in the room. There's no women in the building, certainly no children. What's more, I have to zoom in to fractions of a second to even see a hint of a change on the wave pattern here, but there's sound, there's an echo, and that sound doesn't come from any of us, and we didn't hear it at the time. I'm walking a hall with Tom as cameras and various other equipment is set up down the hall. An EMF meter, a tool that detects changes in the electromagnetic field, starts spiking up into the red. I find a circuit breaker that creates some movement on the meter at the other end of the hall, but that's a steady reading and it's always in the same spot. This, this is coming and going. It's, it's moving. Yeah, we just took its own picture. I ain't touching the thing. Just took a picture now, that flash. I don't even know if it took it, but I'm just standing here. I just 
just like this. Yeah, so touching cool. the button. I'm behind and a step to the side. He isn't touching the screen on his phone, I can see. And after a random EMF surge, it takes a photo. We move into a room and then into a small shower stall. There's some rumbling on this recording as I set down my equipment, but underneath that, there's something else, something neither Tom nor I hear at the time, and something that the echo seems to indicate is crammed in there with us. Spot. This is a bad area. You heard that, right? Right down here in Breckridge and Rodney, my family all grew up right there. My dad has 11 brothers and sisters, and I drove a trike off the stoop about this high down on the sidewalk. And one of the handlebars didn't have one of those little red protector things on it, just pipe. And it fell down, and that pipe went up through here. And I bled out, and uh, they ran me the two blocks up here and put me back, pulled me back together. At this I mean, this was the hospital before St. Pete's was here in '72. St. John's was the hospital, not St. Pete's. And so I got a lot of love for this place. A lot of people get kind of freaked out by I didn't hear, but for me, it's a different kind of comforting kind of thing because they saved my life here. Seconds later, Tom thinks he hears his phone chime. It's several feet away, the screen off on a counter. He steps over to pick it up and, well. All right, go. That's what I was hearing. Show you everything. Go, it's glass animals, I love it. So, that's weird. Tom's phone is stuck on a white screen. Pandora isn't loading, but it's playing. Phone glitch? Sure, maybe. But in context, it's certainly something to wonder about. Everything is now nearly set up, but evidence, it turns out, already being gathered. Equipment ready, the team gathers in the meeting room on the third floor of the St. John's building. It's purported to be highly active, so I'm watching my levels as Michael asks a series of questions, and I'm realizing that when nobody's talking, the mic is telling the tablet that there's sounds and they should be then recorded. There's an electric hum in many of the rooms in this old building, particularly that meeting room. It's eventually tuned out by our ears, but permeates the audio recordings, so it covers multiple faint noises. They do sound like something, but because of that background noise, can't be regarded as anything significant, certainly not proof. But that hum doesn't mask everything. I'm watching, Michael, I'm watching my meters are going up like it's getting sound after your questions here. It's faint, but it's there. It was the last thing that I saw just before I speak up, letting Michael know that something looks like it's happening. Sure seems like a faint Michael Sweet. First and last names. Spirit's getting on good terms with Michael early. Later, he gets another shout-out, interrupting a question. This time, we don't hear a thing in that room, but the recording's clear. Something is there. Here's my audio. Can we finish this? Now, it's there's something. It's not clear what was said, but it is when you listen to the recorder placed right in front of Michael, who did at the time pause because he says he thought he did hear something. Can you finish this? <laughs> so there it is. That was Michael. Thankfully, I'm not wearing a name tag. I'm not really sure how I would react. There's later a request to make an object in the room move. And there's a short audible slide of something heavy sliding across the surface. At least that's what it sounds like. The IR video of that moment in that room shows that nothing moved. The recording's poor and the noise is faint, but it's there and it's heard by everyone in the room. Again, this was recorded on two different recorders. Is that you moving over there? No. Once again, that slide, listen close, it's there.
So a bit later, we're trying something out called a spirit box. It's essentially a machine that spins through radio signals really quickly, never stopping on one long enough for you to make anything out. It sounds like you're tuning your car radio, just spinning the dial. The theory is that if you're then able to make something out, it may just be an intentional message. Again, Michael, popular guy. Yeah, seems like Mike. There's a meter in the room that is fluctuating. There's a request to come closer to the end of this meter, which would, it's thought, then push those numbers higher. If the spirit box is to be believed, though, twice, whoever's hanging around isn't interested. Just touch the tip of that. Hold up. It just said no. And one more from the box. It sounds like it hits on back-to-back -back sounds to form a single word, which would start to signal a theme for us. Exit. <laughs> Our investigation team is largely gathered in the meeting room. Tom takes a chance to explore and ask questions in a quiet wing of the floor. During this time, he gets some pretty wild recordings. Some are faint, and the whispers wouldn't come through the radio all that well. But at one point, he does get a bit of instruction. At least, that's what it sounds like. Ask her, or asthma, maybe? It was a hospital. Paranormal researchers have discussed the occurrence of pops and clicks on recordings, often immediately preceding unexplained sounds or voices. It seems my mic may have picked up several of these throughout the night. Shuffling and scuffling noises are evident when things are being moved, but there's clicks, something loud, throughout the recordings when everything is set down on a flat surface, no one moving anywhere near. After a quieter instance, Michael reacts to what was, at the time, Unheard, at least by me. Was there another little blip there? No words, but there was a click, and that tablet was nowhere near anyone. Was there another little blip there? Seconds later, he's talking, and there's a slight something underneath his second sentence. It's weird. With, with medium stuff, it doesn't happen in my ears. It happens in my mind. And to try to do this stuff, to get it and to try to do this stuff to get it. Later, he asks for a name, and something yet again, something unheard in the moment, gives him an answer of sorts. Can you say your name really loud? The spirits may be getting tired of talking, Tom, too, gets that same kind of tone. At one point, he hears an audible, hey, at least that's what he thinks he hears, so he heads down to the area, and he heads into room 219. We've been in and out of this room all night. He asks for a name, and there is a whispery response. What's your name? Not hearing anything and not checking his audio at the time, Tom decides to leave a few minutes later. He stands up and gets a bit of a head rush, he says, and, well, it sounds like that room's resident a bit frustrated with his inability to hear the reply. Quiet, but on review, pretty clear. The late night rain is now shifted into early morning snow as we load equipment into the cars in the dark of St. John's parking lot. I glance back at the windows of that third floor wondering just maybe if I might catch a flash of something, someone, looking back. It's been, as we will soon discover, an eventful night. I'm still not sure what happened that night, but I can't deny that something did happen. And as I sit here now, I can't help but wonder just what goes on in that building when no one else is around to listen in. So there it is, the very first unofficial Big Sky Paranormal 
ghost hunt. Uh, at that point, I was just a guy trying to see if I could record something. As you heard in that thing, it, less than a minute in, I actually recorded an EVP. Crazy, right? Uh, it, it, it was a lot of fun. I'd love to get back in there, but I, so far, I, I haven't been able to get back in there. Maybe one day. There are some buildings here in town that I'd like to try out. It's it's just getting the people to say yes, right? And to be willing to do it. So uh, I, thanks again for joining, guys. I sure appreciate it. I got to get going. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.